Hello and good evening. So um, we are on stage again and we have our 10 second delay. So we are appearing right now. Here we are. Um, yeah, we are back again on stage and uh, with the big event for tonight, our closing keynote, um, Elizabeth Howden, uh, product marketing manager at the uh, Lessing Crowd Migration product team. Is that correct? Did I get all these things in, one, in the right order? Perfect. So, um, and uh, she will give us um, an overview over the cloud migrations program and the tools associated with that. And with that, Elizabeth, I will leave you alone on stage. Uh, for everybody in the audience, um, we are going to have a Q&A session after this presentation. So uh, we won't have Q&A here because of the... Uh, it's a stupid feature of hop in, uh, hop in. If you have a PowerPoint presentation, you do not see your own screen anymore. Um, so that means she, uh, Elizabeth will not be able to see the chat and everything. And that's why we decided we have the presentation. And then we are moving to a separate session that's also in the program um, and have Q&A and on our final discussion and wrap up and everything in that session. So just as a... Yeah, what's that? An organization, a public service announcement. That's it. Okay, <laughs> Elizabeth, have fun, uh, and I'm going to leave you and uh, watch you on my other screen. See you on the other side. <laughs> awesome. Well, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. It sounds like it's been a great day and evening so far. So I'm excited to be with you all today to talk a little bit about cloud migrations. I'm hoping if for some reason you can't see my screen, I can no longer see you all. So feel free to interrupt me. But um, as was mentioned, I'm Elizabeth Howden. I'm a product marketer on our cloud migrations team at Atlassian. Um, and I'm excited to be here virtually with you all. It's always great to hear from our customers and get feedback and questions. So definitely as we're going through this today, take note of your questions. We'll tackle them all head on. And if there are any questions I can't answer or don't know the answer to, I'll be super upfront about it, um, but we'll take down your name and information, get the right Atlassian, um, and we'll get you the information that you need. So no fear, if I can't answer your question, I will report back and we'll get you the information you need. So I think, you know, I want to start by acknowledging the announcement we made a few weeks ago um, to simplify Atlassian's self-hosted offerings so to focus on cloud. And we'll continue to invest in our data center offering, but we'll stop selling new server licenses in February of 2021 and continue support on existing server licenses until February 2024. And just want to be super transparent and open and authentic change is super hard. And I'm sure there are lots of you in the audience today. This is a change that might make you feel anxious or angry or uncertain. Um, and we know at Atlassian that this is a big shift. And especially for those of you who have been champions of our server products. Um, and just know that there's a lot of uncertainty out there right now. So again, wanna first acknowledge this is a big shift. And second, um, our priority is really just to be sure that you all and all of our customers have the information and resources you need going forward to make a decision um, and to understand what your options are. So this session is designed to give you all the information you need, all the information I know about how teams can make the move to cloud. Um, so I hope it will be helpful. I also just wanted to give kind of a snapshot of the timing of this decision. Um, it's worth emphasizing that we will continue supporting existing server licenses for three more years. So until that February 2nd, 2024 date. And we shared this decision three years ahead of time for two Two main reasons. First, again, because we know it can be a big shift for many businesses and want to make sure that our customers have plenty of time to assess and make a plan. And second, we also know that cloud isn't yet ready. Atlassian's cloud isn't yet ready for some of our customers. Um, so we built out and published a cloud roadmap so that it will be ready for the majority of our customers by the time these changes take effect. 
Um, in the meantime, we're actively capturing customer feedback about what may be blocking you on cloud, what your concerns are on cloud, um, and we're really making our progress against our cloud platform, again, as open and transparent as possible. So here's that public facing roadmap I mentioned. It's published on Atlassian.com. It highlights what we've shipped and what we're investing in across our cloud products, our cloud platform, and our migration tooling. So we'll continue to update this page, our product teams will, um, as we make progress against these initiatives that customers have told us are important. So you can always have this as your source of truth um, and just kind of a, a hand on the drumbeat of where we are in our investments in cloud. Um, but with all that said, just for the scope of this conversation and what we can spend our time focusing on today, I do want to emphasize that for the purpose of this presentation, um, we'll be talking about cloud in the context of cloud migrations. Um, again, kind of focusing on that how cloud, if you decide cloud is your destination, how can you make the move rather than um, why cloud? We could spend hours talking about that. Maybe that'll be another session at a later time, um, but just really wanna focus on the cloud migration piece of it today. But if you have questions about our journey to cloud announcement or want to give feedback on our cloud platform, I want to highlight two opportunities. First, we've created this um, contact form on our website that's specific to this announcement. So if you have questions about your options, what this means for you and your team, anything, um, you can fill out this form on Atlassian.com. And I'll send out this deck so that I'm going to throw a lot of links at you and screenshots. So um, you'll you'll have have a copy of this in your own hands. But specific to this announcement, um, depending on what you need or what you have questions on, this form will be sure we can get the right expert um, to reach out to you to get you the information you need. And the second, um, if you'd like to help us build, continue to build our cloud platform and give feedback on what may be blocking you on cloud. I also wanna plug a really cool opportunity to join one of our server champion community groups. Um, these will be open to join until May 1st, 2021. And what this will be is um, group members will be connected with Atlassian product managers who are working on the requirements for our cloud platform across a few key areas, like security is one, performance is one, um, I think there are four or five total, but this is just a way for our PMs to first and foremost listen um, and understand customer needs when it comes to cloud. And this will also be a forum that they'll present our progress to date and solicit feedback on future plans and our cloud roadmap. So with that, um, it's kind of setting the stage. Um, and with that, I do wanna dive into migration. So today I'll be covering six topics. First, an overview of the migration's journey. Second, how and when to engage a solution partner, getting your internal stakeholders on board, the new Atlassian migration program that we're super excited about. Um, talk a little bit about cloud apps, and finally share some lessons learned and key takeaways. So a bird's eye view of the migrations journey. We think about migrations in six phases, assess, plan, prep, test, migrate, and launch. And you'll hear me say this a few times during um, our conversation today, but no two companies are the same, no two instances are the same, so no two migrations are the same, but this is a framework we've designed to be a repeatable process that's flexible to meet different team needs and um, kind of meet you where you are in terms of your cloud migration. And what surprises some customers about this infographic, this chart, is that the actual migration doesn't happen until the second to last step. So what we continue to see as the key to a successful and easy and smooth migration um, is really investing in the planning and assessment phases up front. And the upfront work you do in partnership with us at Atlassian, with a solution partner if you choose to use one, will make your life easier later on. Teams who put in the time and the effort 
and the careful thought ahead of time to assess and plan properly migrate faster with fewer issues. So quick plug to, to put in put in the planning, um, it does pay off. And for enterprise migrations in particular, we know that um, migrations can often be more nonlinear for larger customers and require some more coordination between internal teams. But nevertheless, this is a good framework that we see um, helpful to customers to kind of set expectations and understand what those key milestones will be that you'll hit along the way. Um, and as part of our Atlassian migration program, which I'll touch on more in a moment, we published a server to cloud migration guide on Atlassian.com. Um, encourage you if you are starting on the path towards a cloud migration, this is definitely a good page to bookmark, check back on, revisit. Um, but it's it's that detailed step-by-step -step linking out to um, our document Atlassian documentation, to video resources, um, to kind of how-tos, all about the nuts and bolts and specifics of migrating. So definitely a good resource that we encourage you to check out and share with others on your team who may be involved. Um, and again, no two migrations are the same but there are a few different ways that we see customers making the move to cloud. I'll highlight these are three of the most common ways um, and give you a sense of some of the pros and cons of each. First, a small portion of our customers do lift and shift as we call it, meaning they just move everything from their on-premise instance to cloud. Um, and this is great because it can decrease costs to migrate because um, it usually happens on a shorter timeline but it could also result in moving unneeded projects, spaces, users to cloud, which can increase cost in the long run. Second, what's more common and what we typically recommend for the majority of our customers is, excuse me, an optimize and shift approach. So this is an opportunity to kind of optimize and clean up your existing on-prem instance before you migrate and move only those most important um, and current projects, spaces, users, apps over to cloud. And it does require some upfront planning, but we've heard time and time again that this can be just a super valuable exercise for customers. Um, it can help the bottom line and, and make your migration easier and kind of optimizing and refining and kind of tightening up um, the users and spaces and projects you'll need on cloud. And finally, another way to migrate is through a phased approach. Um, if there are certain projects or spaces that aren't ready for cloud yet, we recommend that you plan a phased migration. And it also allows for some phased user onboarding because, um, you know, in addition to this being a technical exercise, it's real end users and teammates and people that are affected. So in a phased migration, you can kind of space out that user onboarding to cloud. Um, but it will also require some careful planning and mapping out dependencies. So with that, we'll talk about how you know um, if you should work with a solution partner, how to know. So if you take a bird's eye view, you'll see that there are lots of different players that are involved in a cloud migration. You're not alone. This is a good thing. Um, when you invest in migrating to cloud, you'll have the full support and participation of teams across Atlassian, marketplace partners, depending on what apps you have, and solution partners, if you choose to use one. So we typically ask migrating customers to evaluate the complexity of their migration to determine the levels of support and you'll need the time it will take. So here are a few kind of elements to consider as you evaluate your own migration complexity. First, what Atlassian products do you plan to migrate in what order and on what time frame? Second, um, is it important? Do you, do you need to move everything all at once? Can you do it in waves? Can you do a phase migration? Third, what are your business critical third party apps? Fourth, where is ground truth for your user accounts? Um, do you have an identity provider? Do you plan to connect it to cloud? And finally, do you have business critical integrations? And what paths will you use to connect them to cloud? 
So that's kind of higher level. Sometimes we find customers need some more benchmarking and kind of numbers to compare it to, to evaluate um, complexity. So here are a few of the you know rough benchmarks we typically give in terms of when to consider working with a solution partner who's done many successful cloud migrations and can bring that, that expertise and planning bent to the experience. And if you do decide you'd like to work with a partner, we are happy to connect you. Um, another link I'll plug, there's a contact form for partners on our website. Um, we have a great network of solution partners and are happy to get you connected with one of them. So what about your own teams? This is a question we commonly get. And it's, it's worth um, kind of honing in on this fact that migration is a team sport. And it's important if you are migrating to cloud to put your internal migrations team together as soon as possible. Um, as with any strategic change in your organization, the earlier and more thoroughly you plan, bring in the right stakeholders, set your business objectives, set a timeline, um, the smoother the process will go. So grab the people you need and set expectations as early as possible. We see this, um, something that people don't always kind of think about enough early on when they're thinking about a migration, but it's super important. And here are some of the roles and responsibilities we see often take part in a cloud migration. As with most things, the people you'll need to pull in depends on your business and the complexity of your migration. For example, we see some small businesses that have a single project manager that can also handle the technical side of things. And then on kind of the other end of the spectrum, we work with large enterprises who may have multiple representatives across all these different teams. So. Um, it will kind of depend on the nature of your business, your teams, the nature of your migration, but a few key stakeholders to highlight here. Um, first, the executive sponsor, typically your connection to leadership and will handle things like approving the budget or the business case. So definitely um, need to be in tight connection with your executive sponsor. Um, second, someone from your security team should be involved early to make sure the migration plan does meet all security standards and to keep security from becoming a blocker later on in the process. And finally, last one to mention is compliance and legal. Similarly, um, don't want these to become blockers as you're already kind of in the throes and depths of a cloud migration. So definitely bring in these teams early to make sure things go smoothly and everyone's on the same page. And as you get your internal stakeholders on board, you'll need to consider and evaluate the cost of cloud compared to your self-managed solution. So in terms of what Atlassian manages compared to what customers manage, the equation does look different on cloud. I think this is a kind of a great visual to represent that. Um, we think about it as in cloud, Atlassian's got your back. We provide things like security and compliance right out of the box. And it is a more hassle-free, lower maintenance way for companies to operate. Um, but we also know that it can be difficult for existing server customers to quantify the cost of things like their current maintenance or hosting costs on server. So. Um, ultimately, kind of our, our thought on total cost of ownership is cloud allows you to dedicate more of your time and resources of your teams on your core business competencies, not on maintaining the Atlassian stack. And we created a tool to help our customers kind of start understanding the cost and some of those more hidden costs of on-premise hosting. So definitely rec recommend you check it out as you start building your business case and evaluating cost of cloud. So once you've gotten your internal stakeholders on board, how can Atlassian help? And we are here to help. Um, that's kind of, if I can get one message through today, I hope it will be that, that we are here to help. We've launched the Atlassian migration program to give migrating customers, all migrating customers access to the support, resources, and tools we think you'll need to execute a successful migration. 
So the Atlassian Migration Program, again, is free and available to all customers. And we typically find that the degree to which you'll need to kind of engage with these various facets and components of the, of the program, again, depends on the complexity of your migration. So I just want to walk through some kind of essential elements of the program um, and really bringing all the support resources and tooling that Atlassian is and was working on under one roof of the Atlassian Migration Program. First, support, which includes a dedicated support team focused solely on migrations. So when you um, raise a migrations ticket, it goes into a separate queue um, with this dedicated team to get you the help you need. Um, as I mentioned earlier, network of expert solution partners who have executed many successful migrations. And finally, the Atlassian community, um, which I, this is a community event, so hope many of you are already plugged into community, but a great place to get help from other customers and just the Atlassian customer community at large. Second, resources, which includes the Cloud Migration Center, um, which is really Atlassian's hub for all things cloud migrations. That great guide that I showed you, that's housed within the Cloud Migration Center. So definitely good place to check out. Um, we also have lots of documentation, um, an extensive library of technical migration how-to content. And finally, the Atlassian Trust Center, um, where we transparently answer questions about security, privacy, and compliance. And finally, tools, um, the free cloud migration trial, which is available to all server and data center customers. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more because it's an important one. Um, the cloud migration assistance, which are server and DC apps that make it easy to migrate selected JIRA projects or confluence spaces without the need for manual importing. Um, and finally, Atlassian University is a great um, tool we are kind of talking about in the backstage area. Again, that element of training people on this change, not only kind of tech, the technical change, but the very human side of learning to work in a new great platform. Um, we have Atlassian University, which is a combo of free and paid courses to help users get up to speed and comfortable in cloud. So I wanna take a closer look at a few of these. Um, first, the cloud migration managers that I mentioned and the degree to which you'll need to interface with our CMM team um, depends on complexity and factors like number of users, apps, and the products you're migrating to cloud. But regardless, CMMs support both non-enterprise and enterprise migrations, provide resources, and can help to address below address roadblocks if they arise. Um, and something that not everyone knows is an important role of our CMMs is also to feed migrator feedback and insights back into the business. So um, in that way, we're really always working to improve the migration experience and the tools and support that Atlassian provides. Second, the free cloud migration trial is a tool that we hear great customer feedback on. Um, it's free to all current on-premise customers, server or data center, built on customer feedback that kind of your typical seven-day trial isn't enough time to explore cloud and migrate. So with this trial, um, you and your users can explore cloud without worrying about that seven-day countdown. Um, you can use it to try our cloud standard or premium plans for the whole trial period which lasts for the remaining duration of your current server or data center license. And when you are ready to start migrating, you can also use this free cloud trial um, for user acceptance testing on migrated data. Second, I meant, or third, mentioned um, some of our tooling, the cloud migration assistance. Um, the JIRA cloud migration assistant, I'm just gonna show you a few kind of screenshots of the process. Um, but it migrates selected projects and associated user accounts using a step-by-step -step wizard. And it currently migrates JIRA software projects with support for migrating JIRA apps, JIRA service management projects, and advanced roadmaps coming in mid-2021. So again, that um, roadmap I show you, um, all the updates to our cloud migration assistance are all kind of logged there with some, some timing expectations. 
And we also have a cloud migration assistant for Confluence, um, similarly migrates selected Confluence spaces using this kind of step-by-step -step wizard. We have a check for errors called a pre-flight check, um, and we'll have support for migrating Confluence apps also coming in mid-2021. But these are great tools. We They're free. We hear great customer feedback on them, and we're continuing to invest in them and make them better. So pretty exciting. And one element of the cloud migration assistance is the app assessment feature. Um, so a huge part of the assess phase of your migration likely will be if you have apps, which we know many of our customers do, will be determining what apps to take with you to cloud um, based on their availability in cloud, feature parity, and migratability to cloud. So the cloud migration assistants make it super easy through app assessment to get an audit of your existing on-prem apps, um, quantify their usage, quickly see in kind of one space if they're available in cloud and what migration paths exist. So definitely, um, you know, as we talk to customers, apps come up early. I'm sure they'll we'll talk about it more in the Q and A. But we really recommend this is a great first place to start to get that full sense of what is your app um, experience and picture where you are now and what plan and strategy can you make for cloud. Um, and to make it a little easier for customers to complete app assessment, we just launched a great demo. It really walks step by step um, through the app assessment. So again, you'll have this deck with the links, but a great, a great demo to check out. And speaking of apps, um, let's talk a little bit about the availability of cloud apps and integrations. So cloud enables a best of breed tool chain across all of your workflows. And we have a ton of integrations with our SaaS partners that are available for our cloud products today. And, you know, Thinking of the Slack one specifically, but all of the ones on this page, um, really the value for customers and for end users here is less context switching required so that your teams can work with speed and efficiency to ship high quality products. And second, when it comes to apps, cloud apps in particular are a fast growing part of the Atlassian marketplace. So far this year in 2020, we've already added 450 new cloud apps to marketplace. So um, kind of the thought of there are no cloud apps, that's that's a misconception that um, if you visit the marketplace and check it out, you'll see all the progress we're making there. And over the past year, we've been working closely with our top marketplace partners to bring you new cloud versions of popular server apps that are already available on server today. So. Um, a few highlights the product team wanted me to highlight today, um, content formatting macros for Confluence by Adaptivist, structure project management at scale by ALM Works, Kamala Document Management, formerly Kamala Workflows by Kamala Tech. I think they might've been here today or participating in a booth. Um, create on transition by Bob Swift Atlassian Apps, an AppFire company, and Elements Connect, formerly Enfeed by Elements. So, Again, just the kind of high level message here is just, we know apps are important. We're continuing our investment in extensibility this year and working closely with our top marketplace partners to bring popular apps to cloud. Um, and in addition to cloud app availability, we also know that app data migrations are an important part of this process. And today many apps support migration paths, but some of them do require manual work or scripts to facilitate facilitate the data transfer. Um, we've we hear you. We know app data migration is important. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to find the information that you need. Um, so we um, have consolidated kind of all the available documentation on migration paths provided by marketplace partners into a single source of truth. Um, this knowledge base article is available today and lists all the marketplace apps that have documented migration paths. And we're not stopping there. We're also making it easier for app developers to build automated migration paths using APIs that will allow them to integrate with our migration tooling. So you'll have 
soon more automated migration paths available within the cloud migration assistance. Um, so we're working closely with marketplace partners to build these automated migration paths that will be available within app assessment that we saw within the cloud migration assistance. So look out for announcements later this year about new automated migration paths that are coming. Um, this is an area we're investing in and excited about. And finally, um, wanna leave plenty of time for questions. So we'll wrap with some lessons learned from successful migrations and a few key takeaways. So here are five things that we have learned about migrating to cloud. First, have clarity on why you're migrating to cloud. Um, be sure every stakeholder is clear on the key benefits you're looking to drive and what you're willing to trade off in order to gain those benefits. Benefits could be speed, productivity, enhanced security, collaboration, scalability, um, you know, no longer having to do manual updates, whatever they are for your company, be clear upfront and align stakeholders on what benefits you're looking to drive. Um, and you'll find that that can make decision making much quicker once everyone's aligned on the same goals. And Sky, one of our Atlassian customers talks about the benefit of freeing up his people to focus on their mission instead of maintenance of their Atlassian products. Second, plan twice to execute only once. Um, kind of already touched on it, planning is a super critical stage um, and it's just worth saying again, plan twice, execute once. Planning should be um, the longest part of your migration process. And then once you get to your production migration, it will be quicker and smoother and easier. Three, assemble a balanced team. Um, you know, we talked about migrating as a team sport and it's important that based on what your migration is going to look like to assemble the right team across your internal stakeholders, Atlassian teams, marketplace partners, and a solution partner if you choose to use one. And moving to cloud is an activity that customers typically don't have in-house experience with. Um, I love I love this quote. So it's really important to bring in a partner early, bring in Atlassian early if you decide you'll need a little extra support. Lesson four um, kind of aligns with planning, but avoid bringing old unused data. Moving to cloud is an opportunity to optimize and understand the way your team works and clean out old unused data before you make the move. Um, again, this clarity on the way your teams are actually working um, can help reduce costs and improve performance once you're in cloud. And teams who take the time to clean up, but really it's to optimize their self-hosted instance before migrating, um, typically have smoother migrations. And lesson five, identify measures of success and baseline them. So if you're planning any other sort of big project, you'd have early conversations about your goals and defining and measuring success and cloud migration should be no different. It's important to set the right goals in terms of what you're hoping to achieve. So here are some examples, just a few that we've seen of customers um, who have migrated and just wanna give you a sense kind of of their reason for migrating, what the migration itself looked like, and some of the initial outcomes of the migration. So let's start with Redfin. Um, they migrated to focus their brain power more on innovation rather than managing tech. Um, the migration took about five months of weekly meetings to plan, prep, test, and migrate. And the outcome, they saved 60K immediately right off the bat and have um, even kind of more long-term value freed up their engineering team to be focused on their business and solving business challenges and problems um, versus maintenance. Moving on to Nextiva, Nextiva, Nextiva decided to move to cloud um, because their use of Atlassian was expanding across distributed teams and they wanted to hand over the maintenance to us kind of before overhead got out of hand. Um, Nextiva worked with the solution partner for months to do some pre-migration planning and cleanup. And when the day came, they were able to migrate in less than 24 hours. So um, 
outcome between 50 and 100K of annual cost savings and 100 hours per year of effort saved um, and expanded collaboration and knowledge share and transparency across teams. Lastly, let's talk about HomeGate. Um, HomeGate migrated to shift headcount from managing infrastructure to more strategic work. Um, again, worked with a solution partner, used the Confluence Cloud Migration Assistant for app assessment, um, performed some pre-migration cleanup, and completed the test and production migration in less than 24 hours. So they reduced overall cost by 15% optimize user access and onboarding, um, and we're able to pivot their team to focus more on innovation. So in summary, and then we'll get started with, I'll get to see you all and interact with you all. We can do some Q&A, but four takeaways um, that I hope you'll remember today, I hope have come through. First, migrating is a team sport, so align your stakeholders and engage a partner if you need one. Second, we are here to help. The Atlassian Migration Program provides the support, resources, and tools that you need. Three, we're actively investing in cloud app availability and cloud app migrations. And four, synthesizing some of those lessons learned. Plan, clean up, work as a team, and measure success. And if you are ready to get started on your migration, ready to kind of take the next, next step in your exploration phase and your assessment phase, and just are curious to learn a little bit more about cloud. Um, we recommend without a doubt, the best place to start is to activate your free cloud migration trial. It's free, it's low risk, it lasts the same duration as your existing license, and it gives you a way to start exploring cloud today. So if you want to, don't quite know exactly where to start, but want to do one thing to work towards cloud migration today, recommend activate your cloud migration trial. And then second, just a plug, again, I mentioned the importance of feedback and um, understanding where our customers are, what other information they need about cloud migration. So um, I'll figure out the best place to drop this, but we have a quick Two minute survey is probably even too long, probably one minute survey just about the session today and to get some more information on what would be helpful as you consider moving to cloud. So a quick plug, if you don't mind filling out the survey, would really appreciate it. Um, help us kind of get better and improve migrations and migrations tooling. So with that, um, thank you for your time and I'll stop sharing and we can open it up to some Q&A. Hello. And here we are back again. <laughs> and is this the best place, that survey link? Can I yeah. drop it in here? OK. The event chat, I would say, because then everybody will see it. So um, Elizabeth, maybe you can share that with you, because that would be my first question. Um, I missed the developer event yesterday. Uh, or for the day before yesterday, and and I don't know if you can help us with that, but there's uh, there's still there will be a lot of changes in how uh, people can develop apps for cloud with Forge, form mm -hmm. first and foremost, and and as far as I understand it, uh, Forge is still in beta. Do you have? Can you give us an update when that will change and and how that will change, uh, approximately? Yes. So not the day and the hour, but. Um, let me, you know what I can do is I'm going to Slack the person who's running that Forge beta and ask her. So maybe stay tuned for a moment. Okay. An that's the, that's the fun of working across time zones. When we are getting ready for bed, somebody else yeah. who's, who's moving Forge out of beta is just getting up and ready for getting Slack. started uh, yeah. in Texas. So it's lunch time here. Exactly. So I bet I can get an answer. Perfect. So, um, and while we wait, maybe another question. I have a question. Hey, Elizabeth, I'm Hubert. I'm also co-lead with York together of that group. I have a question about uh, the plans for um, releasing staging and test environment automatically created because that's what my, a lot of my customers struggle with because mm -hmm. they would like to test something and there is no like button or script. Hey let's refresh the lower environment and do the testing there. 
Yeah. So we will have um, sandbox environments and bundled releases available with our cloud premium and cloud enterprise plans. Um, and I believe those are both soon to be released, but the exact, those will both be on our cloud public facing cloud roadmap. But I know that that will be a functionality available in premium and enterprise for cloud. So there is no still date for that. Okay, we will wait then. <laughs> but yeah, we are a lot of the questions like that daily so so yeah yeah that's good feedback too kind of um transparently one thing we're trying to understand is where are the concentrations of different questions is it around apps or security or um and change management is certainly certainly one that we're hearing and we're solving towards so um i just took down that that's that's questions um that are coming in Okay, feedback from my side also, because I did some migration with some of my clients recently. Mm -hmm. And one of the pain points for us was that after migration, let's say we don't do migration of the instance at once, let's say. So let's say you do the migration of the SAM projects, doing cleanup, because you know mm -hmm. the roles, some stuff are duplicated to the cleanup. And afterwards, there is no possibility to uh, do another phase of migration. So there is a workaround, which is pretty nasty. So you just mm -hmm. delete the add-on for migration from the server and you install that again, but then you have a triple duplicated field. Mm. So that's something that maybe you can write down and yeah, bring it I to will. your team about like that there are some customers that they want to migrate at once. They want to migrate like in phases, like let's say IT department now do the cleanup. Then there is a business, legal and so on departments. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Noted. And are you a solution partner or a mm, consultant? No, I work for eBay. Okay, cool. Awesome. That is probably one of the biggest server instances. <laughs> um, yes, it's huge. But we migrated to data center, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so for for now there is no plans because we have over 100 add-ons, so or 80 something across different applications. So for us, moving to cloud would be oh my god! I don't want to think about that. I need the <laughs> army. <laughs> okay. 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 Like, <laughs> well, are your teams in? Are you liking being on data center? Yeah, it's pretty good, especially because you have that CDN feature. So the people has a lower latency between the different time zones mm -hmm. and so on. But we, to, to be honest, in, in eBay, we have 20 instances. So we have wow. two main and 18 of small different kind of because we don't push everybody that use just one. So if you want to use your own, you do it. But then you know how it is. Especially yeah. when you have like 20,000 people working for company or something like that. <gasps> yeah, that and, big <laughs> And especially with that tech companies, we acquire like, like Atlassian, like somebody every year. So, so, and then you need to integrate and so on, or sometimes you don't integrate, just let them working on their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And another question about that acquisition of the help that, uh, that you have help or help, how you name that uh, company, right? Help or help? Uh -huh, help. help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So can you give us uh, what's the plan with that integration? Because do I have to pay for help or will I have something like how it's about the pricing and so on? Because it's also paid to application. It will be like included in Jira software. A license or it mm -hmm. will be totally like independent or you don't know what I don't know but I'll um, connect with that team and let you know and just like, an just an announcement we have help um, as a guest in our webinar in January so oh, awesome they will be with us on the 4th of January so very early so um, and we are part of that help roadshow in January so I think they will be able to answer that question. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So because yeah. They, 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 as far as I understood them, they are still very much work in progress and getting all the marketing stuff integrated and in, in parallel. So, but they will join us in, in January. Awesome. And I'll get you some, some other yeah. information in the meantime. And I got an answer on Forge. Mm -hmm. um, GA is scheduled for December. 
though timelines, of course, are subject to change. But right now, we're talking okay. December. So, so we are talking December 2020. Yes. Okay. So this year. <laughs> Good <Okay. clarification. laughs> Soon. York. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, you have to ask. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. time is short. Okay, no, but December is, is next week, so that's yeah. okay. Um, perfect. Uh, I had another question. Do, do you have kind of an experience if you look at a um, if you look at a, if you look at a lot of migrations um, about the the ratio between, let's say organizational effort training everybody to the new platform because it's it's similar but not the same especially uh, especially if uh, depending on which server version you're migrating from um, and uh, the sort of the organizational impact and the technical impact is there a ratio does that change with the size of the installation so uber this uber's installation is basically an exception because it's that huge but that's mm -hmm. The organizational impact would be enormous, maybe much yeah. more than a technical impact. I would say I'm not sure what the ratio of impact would be, but what I will say is I think oftentimes teams discount the organizational impact and are so focused on the technical impact and the technical implications that they don't put enough thought around giving their end users a heads up, putting together training, thinking through the rollout. They're kind of too siloed in that technical impact piece of it that um, the organizational part can have a greater impact than teams maybe anticipate because they're not immediately planning for it. So that's definitely has been um, a learning and something we're thinking about is how, in addition to Atlassian University, what other tools and resources can we provide customers, provide solution partners um, to account more for the organizational impact? That would have been my follow-up question if you're planning, let's say, any out-of-the-box comparison training. So, well, you have been a server user um, and now you're a cloud user. Let us let me show you the 20 most important differences, something like that, and do that in a self-paced training, I don't know, a day or something. Yeah. Are you planning something like that? Yeah, so something similar to that does exist um, okay. on Atlassian University. And I would also, can I share my screen again in this? Yes, of course, There's a, there should be a um, button that you're a moderator, you can basically do it. Okay, anything. yeah, let me just show you for JIRA, this other, a few, it's not 20, but a few other resources we have um, to account for just that. Show you, so within the Cloud Migration Center, we have a cloud migration video page that are broken out by helpful resources before you migrate, while you migrate, and after you migrate. Um, and as part of this, I think we'll continue building out this library. But what exists today, um, you can click into Atlassian University to see more. But there are kind of five of the most common use cases and show how to execute kind of the basic JIRA tasks and cloud compared to server. So this is one page um, that we have out of the box for everyone. And then there's also more cloud training available within Atlassian University. Okay. Yes. And these are a mixture of free and paid trainings. Okay. Um, I have another question if I may. Uh, mm -hmm. it, and, and please audience, if you want to join us, uh, do that. Um, just share your audio and video via the blue button in the upper right corner uh, and you can join us on the panel. Um, I have another question. Did I understand you correctly that you mentioned that you are going to provide APIs to th for the migration tools? So basically that I cannot just click through the website but basically use them programmatically somehow. So we're providing APIs and have provided the first set of APIs to marketplace partners so that they can build automated migration paths for their okay. apps um, that um, integrate with our migration tooling. Mm -hmm. But that will not be general availability. That's only for marketplace partners. Yeah, it's it'll be um, for okay. the marketplace partners to use. Okay, so then I that's when I wanted to clarify that because I heard yeah. APIs and and stuff, and that's always interesting. 
And I'll share one other. Here's a um, community article that kind of talks about those API. I mean, doesn't go into specifics, but links out to some resources and gives an update on. Um, can you can you drop the link? Can you just drop the link yeah. in your event chat? That I guess that would be more. There yeah, exactly. Perfect. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, other questions from the audience? We are still 28. I don't know if everybody's here, but we are still 28. So there should be one question. Or we have, or we have just worn you down over the last five <laughs> hours and, and there's nothing left anymore. You are completely empty. I'm also but, gonna share my email address in the chat. If you're mm -hmm. feeling shy or tired right now, but other questions come up, definitely. Let me know, connect on LinkedIn, send me an email, and we're happy to help. Perfect. So if there are no other questions, Hubert, if you don't have anything? Yeah, I have tons of questions, but I okay. give the voice to other people. <laughs> no, yeah. but if there are no so, other people, uh, ask away. I mean, that's, that's, that's all. Oh, sorry, something with my video. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so currently, some of my clients also, and we struggle with doing scripting automation in cloud. I mean, mm -hmm. if you add the post function, it's asynchronous, right? Whatever, if you use the script runner or uh, power scripts from the C prime, still is asynchronous. Mm -hmm. And the pain point is that, for example, if you add it to the post function and user will stay on the page, it has to click refresh the page to see the change. Mm -hmm. um, is that how it is currently? You have to refresh? Yeah, you need to refresh the, the page to see the, the change. For example, on the create screen, you have a post function, add comment and assign to somebody and do something else. Mm. Okay, I'm not aware of that. Um, I can deliver that feedback to the team and that's on data center or on server? Jira Cloud. Shit. Oh, that's on cloud, okay. Yeah, Jira Cloud. Something to with my connection. Wait, I will reconnect. So then, let me just, when Hubert returns, if he returns, uh, and before you disappear, just me, let me just, um, Elizabeth will have a forced reboot in five minutes. So I'm using that for closing remarks that you, that you come back so that we have closing remarks now, and then we can ask her questions till she reboots. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. So thank you, Elizabeth, that for your presentation and the Q and A's. Um, everybody else, thank you very much for being here and for being so active, this exceeded our expectations by far. So I had, I was kind of fearful that we um, had kind of 10 people here that were talking to each other. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that. Hubert, closing remarks from you before we go to, oh no, let's go to Anza's question first because Anza has a question in the chat. Uh, any, any guide suggestions material for starting developing apps in the cloud? I will email you something. Okay, answer. perfect. So Hubert, your closing remarks. Yes, uh, so uh, thanks a lot for the great presentation, great event. I was really like surprised about the amount of people. And please remember about our Monday meetings and our webinars. Probably York already mentioned that when I was away. No? Nope. So yeah, we have every Monday webinar with different topic and after the webinar we have always q and a and also unrelated event to webinar discussion and i'm always there and york is always there so you, if you have any technical question or business question our, our partners are there so you can bring your own problem and we will try to solve it and additionally we have a nice uh, open round table discussion over the breakfast once per month last week of the month. So you can also come and talk about any topics, lockdown, socializing, talking about movies, whatever you, you want to discuss with us and socialize. Yeah. yeah. And, and please check our pages, of course, follow us on the Twitter, follow us on the YouTube, please click a, a bell button, please subscribe and yeah. And see you next time. Okay. So, um, you don't have to leave right now. Um, uh, Elizabeth, I can also collect that and then put it in our documentation. That's probably easier, easier for okay. you. If you send that stuff to me, I will put it in our archive and I just Perfect. paired the link in the event chat. Um, 
and uh, the uh, Elizabeth just shared her email a few few uh, uh, lines up. If you scroll up, you find her email. But if you if you send me the information, I will put it in our archive, uh, and then we'll share the information with all the participants, so that you save a bit of time. So not have twenty Great. minutes, right? And I'll uh, also send you the presentation just so everyone can have that. Perfect. That what that would have been my last question right now. Awesome. Because and the I, survey. Don't forget to fill out the survey. <laughs> for for yeah, the survey, the survey link. Um the um everything we did here today, uh, the the public sessions and the, the the presentations have been recorded hopefully if everything worked like uh, advertised. Um so uh the presentations will appear on and this Q&A will appear on YouTube rather quickly. Uh, expected first half of next week, um, and we are working on a on a um, best of reel from the session discussions. But that will take a little bit longer because we have to get permission from everybody that we include into that best of reel that they give their permission that we can use their audio and video and their participation. Um, and then that will appear on YouTube as well. We have some. 30, 40 pages of chat sessions, something like that. that. I looked at the back end, it's something like 600 entries in the chat or whatever. So uh, we are, hopefully I will find, we will find time during the weekend to look, look through that as well. And it may be interesting to have an anonymous, anonymized excerpt from that with a few remarks um, that we can somehow compile in an article. Um, and of course, many thanks to Hubert's cat uh, even though she is threatened by Brexit, as we learned today, because she's a British short hair. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so, um, I need a but, blue card for her. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, thanks to the support cat. Um, and uh, yeah, we are still here. So um, this is not over. We, have, we still have the cafeterias opened. I don't know how, how, how uh, fit our expo partners are, but um, that's still an option and the cafeteria is still open. Uh, this session remains open. So if you have uh, want to talk to, about something else or want to say your goodbyes, uh, this event will remain open and you still can have one-to-one -one meetings if you want to say your goodbyes till 8 p.m. And then I guess this thing will just shut down and I will get an email with a big report and everything. So see you next Monday. Um, see you soon. See you in the real somewhere hopefully soon and uh, hopefully next year we will have a virtual breakfast not only virtual breakfast but also real breakfasts again sometime in april ah yeah one last message from my side and then i stop talking uh, sorry for that um we we are look we are planning a new kind of of event for next year we want to visit you if you are in berlin or in brandenburg uh, we have some uh, audio video equipment and a pa and a few cameras um, and uh, we want to do an Atlassian community uh, event on site. So that will be small and it will be integrated with a Zoom meeting so that we can also do that under pandemic conditions. So maybe just in a conference room with enough social distancing and just Hubert and me and we will wear, I don't know, plastic wrappings or whatever. Um, so, um, but um, that read, uh, um, I will share with you, uh, or if you look in our archive, you find our plans for 2021. And if you want to be visited by us, or if you have a topic, or if we can make a case study about you, we will pack a box, we will visit you and put that in an event. Um, and that's an event that we also can do under pandemic conditions, maybe not today, but hopefully again in January. Um, and we have uh, quite a lot of options to do that. And here's the cat again. So, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. And I'm going to head out. Thanks so much for okay. having me. Great so, event. Great to meet you all. Bye-bye. Well, Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just we really, really should have a developer event of this, this, this version of this event. That is my only regret. We wanted to have uh, a developer session, but uh, this was a bit short notice. We, we couldn't find uh, enough um, moderators and for that who have really had the deep knowledge to do that. Or we didn't ask the right people. That may also be a, 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 
the issue. But yes, definitely there should be a developer event, especially if Forge is general availability in December, you heard it here, uh, that alone is worth a developer event. And we and please look in our, our YouTube library. We had a few great presentations about Forge, uh, one by Anil Kuma, one by Stefan Opel last week. Um, you can do great stuff with Forge. And Forge is also, I guess, the future for cloud development, whatever you do there. Uh, so yes, low, definitely a developer version somewhere. Um, but not today and not tomorrow. So that's the, uh, but very soon. Okay, uh, with that, who would? Thank you. Thank you so um, much, Jörg, for all uh, for all our moderators. Yeah, for, to all our moderators, to all our sponsors who made this possible. So let me name them: Demicon, Kreuzwerker, Resolution, Scandio, and Schütze AG. Who, since yesterday, are not Schütze AG anymore, but Nortel, as far as I know, as a Nortal. Or I, I still have to find the name again. Um, did I, did I miss a sponsor? No. No. These are, these are, thanks these are a lot sponsors. to our sponsor and people that brought the swags. That was a really cool idea. Somebody brought swags? Where was I when somebody brought swags? Okay. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. And the cafeteria is open. Feel free to use it. Feel free to use the one-on-one-to-one -one networks. Look around and see you soon.